Ms. Speaker, I uh, move that the House suspend the rules and pass the bill H.R. 6865 as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 6865, a bill to authorize appropriations for the Coast Guard and for other purposes. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Oregon, Mr. DeFazio, and the gentleman from Missouri, Mr. Graves, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Oregon. Ms. Speaker, I ask the unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks, exclude extraneous material on H.R. 6865 as amended. Without objection, it is so ordered. The Mr. gentleman from Oregon. Mr. Speaker, uh, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Ms. Speaker, I'm proud to call up and speak in support of uh, my bill, H.R. 6865, the Don Young Coast Guard Authorization Act of 2022. This bipartisan legislation will authorize funding for the United States Coast Guard for fiscal years 2022-2023 and address a number of important issues uh, concerning the maritime industry. I'd like to take a moment uh, to express my, my deepest sympathies uh, to Congressman uh, Don Young's wife, Ann, the rest of the family, and the people of Alaska. Don was, uh, he was larger than life. He was the dean of the house. He was affable, cantankerous, uh, and sometimes uh, funny. Uh, you know, I have stories like uh, the speaker mentioned today about Don and, and the, uh, the buck knife in his pocket, but I, I won't go into those now. But anyway, we developed a, a, a good friendship. Um, I feel fortunate that I had time uh, to develop that relationship with him, uh, serving together uh, on both the House Committee on Natural Resources for uh, 26 years and the Committee on Transportation Infrastructure for 36 years. His Chair, uh, his service as chair of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee had an extraordinary impact. It was capped by the passage of Safety Lou, a surface transportation reauthorization that was named for his beloved late wife. It was a strong bipartisan bill that provided much needed investment infrastructure across the country, including my home state of Oregon. Don believed in bipartisanship. We didn't always agree but we would find often a way to compromise, come together for the good of the country. And he always, always stayed true to his values and the people of Alaska. Given Alaska's vast coastlines, the Coast Guard plays a particularly important role in the state. And Congressman Young was always there to support the United States Coast Guard. That's why I'm particularly happy to include several provisions important to the Congressman that will have a dramatic impact on the state of Alaska in this bill. At a committee markup earlier this month, uh, Don said, I voted on 20 Coast Guard authorization bills in my career. I've served on the Coast Guard subcommittee for 46 years. This is a good bill. It's really needed. And it is really needed. And naming it for Don Young is incredibly appropriate. I'd like to thank uh, my ranking member, Sam Graves, uh, and subcommittee ranking member Gibbs uh, for their work. I particularly want to uh, thank um, the chair of the subcommittee, uh, Congressman Carbajal, for uh, this um, very uh, you know, uh, important uh, and overdue additional investment in the Coast Guard and addressing a number of other issues uh, relating uh, to the maritime industry. Uh, this, this is uh, evidence that bipartisanship can still live uh, in Washington, D.C. today. It not only authorizes the Coast Guard, but also reauthorizes the Federal Maritime Commission, which is the center of the supply chain congestion that has plagued this country and the world for over a year. and incorporates the Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 2021, which will begin to address several unfair shipping practices that have contributed to inflation across every sector of the American economy. This legislation gives the Federal Maritime Commission the authority to protect exporters, importers, and consumers from unfair practices by expanding their oversight and enforcement capabilities. Uh, the largest three shipping companies in the world made more money in the last year than they made over the last decade. If it's not warranted, they're essentially running a cartel. And it's time that we took action. Uh, the Federal Maritime Commission under this administration is finally waking up 
and they are going to take action against these cartels and the price gouging that's going on on our consumers. It further amends Title 46 to ensure shipping capacity once contracts are signed, increases penalties for retaliation against shippers, and encourages reciprocal trade. H.R. 6865 increases the Federal Maritime Commission's annual operating budget by 10% um, over 2021. It'll give them the additional resources they need to provide effective oversight and ensure that all foreign carriers abide by fair shipping practices, which they're not doing today. For the Coast Guard, this bill provides more than $12 billion for fiscal year 2022, $13 billion for fiscal year 2023. These authorized funding levels of support service members, fund new asset acquisitions, and improve the Coast Guard's crumbling shoreside infrastructure. I'm particularly uh, pleased with the improved vessel safety measures included in the legislation. H.R. 6865 takes a leap forward in small passenger vessel safety by mandating a common sense requirements for passenger amphibious vessels and others. Um, and uh, Chairman Cabral recently uh, held a hearing uh, on a tra horrible tragedy in his district, uh, which this will also have an impact in preventing in the future. Moreover, H.R. 6865 offers meaningful reforms to a culture of sexual abuse within the maritime industry. I'm proud to have worked with members from both sides of the aisle to determine what changes are necessary to begin to address this toxic culture in this industry, create a safe work environment for all mariners. H.R. 6865 includes language from my other bill, the Safer Seas Act, which will give the Coast Guard more leverage to investigate remove predators who sexually harass and assault. It also includes important safety measures such as surveillance, master key control systems, extends the statute of limitations for cases of sexual assault and harassment. This groundbreaking legislation is just one step towards bringing justice for victims and getting predators out of the industry. In closing, once, let me thank once again my ranking member Sam Graves, um, ranking member Gibbs, and of course Chair Carbajal, for uh, all their extraordinary work on this bill. And with that, I reserve the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise in support of H.R. 6865, the Don Young Coast Guard Authorization Act of 2022, an important piece of legislation that ensures that the United States Coast Guard has the funding that they need to carry out the service's critical missions and keep our borders safe. Today is with both uh, great sadness and great respect that we name this year's Coast Guard Authorization Act after former Transportation Chair um, and Infrastructure uh, Committee Chair, uh, obviously Chairman Don Young. The passing of the Dean of the House was a surprise to all of us and a tremendous loss um, for this body. And our thoughts are with his wife, uh, Ann, and his daughters, Joni and Don, and the rest of his family, as well as his current and his former staff. I had the pleasure of serving as a freshman member of the Transportation Committee when Don began his chairmanship in 2001. And as always, he brought his typical passion and zeal to the job. He was always working for Alaska, but also constantly helping other members take care of their constituents. The chairman, as many still called him, always pointed out that Alaska missed the great infrastructure investment of the earlier centuries that had been made in the lower 48, and he was bound and determined to make sure that he made up for lost time. There isn't a city or a borough or a town or village in Alaska that can't point to at least one road, uh, airstrip, harbor, uh, dock, visitor center, or health clinic that Don didn't have some role in establishing, building, authorizing, or funding. Recently, there's been a suggestion to name a volcano in Alaska after Chairman Young, a rugged, an enduring part of Alaska, the Alaska landscape, always with the potential to erupt at any moment's notice, but always warm at its core. Um, part of me thinks this would be a very fitting tribute uh, as well. And as has been noted many times, it was fitting that he passed away on his way home to Alaska, the state that he loved so much. I will always think of him and smile when I walk by his official, unofficial I should say, unofficial but uncontested, um, seat here on the House floor. Um, his passing was truly a loss for the House. In the Transportation Committee, we will always have the almost life-sized portrait watching over us, reminding members of the importance of the work and the bipartisanship it takes to uh, 
uh, to get it done. One of Don's priorities throughout his career, and also one of my priorities, was strengthening the Coast Guard. And this legislation authorizes the purchase of a 12th national security cutter as well as six additional fast response cutters to ensure that our Coast Guard is prepared for its current and future role in securing America. During our markup of this bill earlier this month, Don remarked that in his statement that both his support for this bill and as the chairman pointed out, he had voted on 20 Coast Guard authorizations in his career and I'm deeply saddened today that he's not gonna be able to cast his vote in support of yet one more. Fittingly, H.R. 6865 also includes a provision offered by the late Dean of the House that allows the Coast Guard to keep Russian vessels out of U.S. waters during the ongoing Russian invasion of Ukraine. With that, Mr. Speaker, I urge uh, support of this important legislation and I would reserve uh, the balance of my time. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield uh, three minutes to the chair of the subcommittee, uh, Congressman Carball. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I would like to express my support for H.R. 6865, this year's Coast Guard Authorization Act which is named in honor of our departed colleague, Mr. Don Young, who tirelessly advocated for the Coast Guard and maritime issues in his many decades of public service. With his legacy in mind, I wish to express my thanks for the leadership of Chairman DeFazio, Ranking Member Sam Graves, and Subcommittee Ranking Member Bob Gibbs that created this bipartisan agreement. H.R. 6865 will renew and enhance support for the critical missions of the United States Coast Guard. Every day, Coasties work to protect our national security and enforce the laws in the maritime environment. They maintain our nation's waterways for the sake of commerce, save lives, and protect the oceans from pollution. These brave service members have time and time again demonstrated their resourcefulness, but they need our support today. The increased authorizations in today's bill signals our confidence in the excellence of the Coast Guard and starts down the road to providing the resources Coasties need to su successfully complete their missions. H.R. 6865 also tackles current challenges to our nation's supply chain, which have recently caused frustration in not only the transportation industry, but in the average families who are being confronted with shortages and increasing costs for basic household goods. H.R. 6865 reauthorizes the Federal Maritime Commission, the entity in charge of promoting fairness and competition in ocean shipping. And it includes the Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 2021, which would provide the Federal Maritime Commission with the authority to directly address the international shipping's contribution to the inflation we are experiencing. As Chairman of the Coast Guard and Maritime Transportation Subcommittee, I am proud that this bill also includes my legislation to amend an archaic 171-year-old maritime law that prevented victims and their families from seeking fair recourse against the vessel owners who were found to be liable for maritime incidences. This provision was developed in response to the Conception dive boat fire in my district in 2019, which was the largest loss of life in a U.S. Maritime marine casualty in decades. Finally, with this bill, we can make significant strides towards stamping out sexual assault and sexual harassment from the maritime industry. Provisions in H.R. 6865 strengthen transparency, surrounding company sexual assault and sexual harassment policies, provide protections for mariners, and remove bad actors from the industry. Such criminal behavior and incidents have no place in the maritime industry. I am proud to have worked with my colleagues on this important legislation, and I look forward to ensuring that it becomes law. I yield back, Mr. Chair. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from Oregon reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At this time, I'd yield four minutes to the gentleman from Ohio who's the ranking member of the Coast Guard Subcommittee, Mr. Gibbs. 
The gentleman is recognized for four minutes. Uh, thank you, Madam, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to rise today in support of H.R. 6865, the Don Young Coast Guard Authorization Act of 2022. The bill represents this Congress's commitment to the men and women serving the Coast Guard and lays the groundwork for maintaining the service's mission, capability, and future. It also honors our colleague Don Young, who passed away last week and is lying in state in Statuary Hall today. Our thoughts go out to his family and staff. The Dean of the House, the Congressman for All Alaska, the former chairman of both the Committee of Natural Resources and the Committee of Transportation and Infrastructure, the longest serving Republican member of the House, the former mayor of Fort Yukon, his titles were many, but they failed to cap fully capture Don's character and endless enthusiasm for the job he loved representing the people of Alaska in Congress. He did that job for 49 years, and he did it well. His legislative record is as amazing as his personal legacy of the friendships he made over the last five decades. He was always a stalwart representative for Alaska and will have a lasting legacy. It is appropriate that we are naming this Congress Coast Guard Authorization Act for Don. He served on the Subcommittee on Coast Guard and Maritime Transportation since it was established in 1995, and as the predecessor subcommittee for 20 years before that. He was the only licensed tugboat captain in Congress, and the Coast Guard plays many vital roles in always a vast and beautiful, but often stormy and dangerous waters of his home state. The Coast Guard is one of six United States Armed Forces, Armed Forces that will help secure our country's borders. As we watch the Ukraine crisis unfold and recognize the apparent lack of readiness in the Russian military, we should be especially aware of the need to provide our armed forces with the resources they need. This bill includes provisions to strengthen the Coast Guard's ability to keep Russian vessels out of U.S. water and provision Don Young authored. Both sides of the aisle worked together to craft this legislation, recognizing that port and coastal security, drug interdiction, and maritime safety are important bipartisan issues to our nation, rather than Republican or Democrat issues. The Coast Guard plays an important role an important and unique role in the national security of maritime safety. The service is a critical component in carrying out drug inter interdiction efforts, keeping our ports and coasts safe, and conducting ice-breaking operations. H.R. 6865 helps the Coast Guard better perform these missions and encourages the use of cutting-edge technology to improve operations while also addressing ongoing issues like how to bring the service's crumbling IT infrastructure into the modern era. Despite the administration's failure to seek appropriate capital funds, le funding levels, this bill authorizes over $9 billion for the operations and support account and $3 billion for, billion for procurement, procurement, construction, and improvement account for fiscal 2022 and provides a 5% increase in FY23. We had hoped that the offset earlier budget shortfalls, but given the rise in inflation, it will be needed just to stay even. As others have noted, this legislation authorizes the purchase of the 12th National Security Cutter and 6 fast response cutters, which are necessary for the Coast Guard future mission capabilities. Vital to my district, I'm also proud of the commitment made to the Great Lakes in this bill. Working with my colleague, Mr. Gallagher from Wisconsin, the bill includes an authorization of a new dedicated icebreaker on the lakes to keep commerce moving as, as much of the year as possible. Thank you to Chair DeFazio, Ranking Member Sam Graves, and Subcommittee Chair Carberhall for working in a bipartisan fashion to give the Coast Guard the resources it needs to accomplish its missions. I urge support of this bill. And a, and a side note, when I was my first year as a freshman, I was the chairman of the subcommittee water resources, and I inadvertently overlooked Don Yun in the questioning order, and uh, that was not a smart thing for a freshman member to do. And uh, I realized my mistake, and I apologized to him, and we became the best of friends, and he you know, also invited me and all of us to go to his, his uh, uh, King Salmon barbecue here in D.C., and, and uh, I'm really going to miss Don Young. I'm really an American patriot. I yield back. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from Missouri reserves. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Uh, uh, speaker, I yield uh, three minutes uh, to uh, Representative Garamendi, uh, a senior member of the committee. The gentleman is recognized for three minutes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I strongly support the Coast Guard Authorization Act of 2022, uh, and I'd like to thank uh, the chairman and uh, the ranking members, uh, also Mr. Carbajal and uh, the minority team for putting together a good piece of legislation. Uh, this bipartisan legislation authorizes the U.S. Coast Guard, our fifth national military service branch for fiscal years 2022 and 23. We know the Coast Guard is critically important. We just heard that here. This bill also goes beyond 
just the Coast Guard. It deals with the Jones Act and something I've worked on for 13 years here, which is make it in America and how we can do that in our maritime industry. And now, in this bill, there are policies and proposals that include long overdue language to close some egregious loopholes to the Jones Act that would allow foreign vessels to undercut American flagged vessels operating, operating in America's offshore environment. In the outer continental shelf, this amendment, H.R. 6728, which is included in this bill, would close that loophole so that those foreign flag vessels are held to the very same high standards that American vessels have to hold to in those same offshore waters. A lot of this comes down to the new offshore wind industry that is flourishing here in the, north, in the Northeast and soon will be found in many other parts of this nation. Do you want those to be American jobs? Or do you want those to be foreign jobs? The question's pretty simple. This bill, as amended, would make sure that those ships and crews operating offshore would have to meet the same high standards. They'd have to be certified that they know what they're doing, that they pass the various background checks, as American mariners must. Now, if you want a wide open thing, then just forget it. But this bill is there to protect American workers in the offshore wind industry, the offshore oil industry, and further beyond that to the General Jones Act fleet. It's a good bill. There are other things in this bill that are good. I had the great pleasure of working with uh, former, our former colleague, uh, Don Young, on his Oil Spill Response Enhance Enhancement Act. We worked together on that for several years. It is included in this bill, and it would certainly be appropriate uh, that uh, that stay in this bill. We're going to have always the normal trouble with the Senate. They just seem to not understand all that they should. Uh, but this is a great bill. I want to compliment all who worked on it. Uh, the uh, minority teams did excellent work. Thank you so very much. And I see the uh, co-author of our amendment has taken his position to carry on. Mr. Graves, good work. The gentleman yields back. Uh, the gentleman from Oregon reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I'd yield two minutes to the gentleman from Louisiana, the ranking member of the Aviation Subcommittee, Mr. Graves. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first of all, I want to thank Chairman DeFazio, Ranking Member Sam Graves, uh, Ranking Member Carvajal, and, and Ranking Member Gibbs for their bipartisan efforts on this legislation. I want to I want to thank my friend Mr. Garamendi for working with us to ensure uh, that American Mariners are, are given a level, play, level playing field. And I want to thank uh, all members involved for the efforts to help to bolster the Coast Guard. Mr. Speaker, the Coast Guard is often described as a Swiss Army knife. You take all the laws that are, uh, that are enforced on, on terrestrial grounds, and we, we effectively uh, put all of those on the Coast Guard men and women uh, for, uh, to be carried out or enforced over, uh, on, on America's oceans, on our seas in our nearshore waters. This is an incredible task. Everything from maritime safety, maritime security, counter drug, alien interdiction, and many, many other missions. Uh, we've got to make sure if we're going to ask them to do such a challenging task that we give them the equipment. Uh, this bill funds or authorizes the 12th National Security Cutter. It, uh, it authorizes six of the fast response cutter, the uh, Sentinel-class vessels that are going to bring uh, better interoperability, better offensive capabilities, uh, faster transit speed, the ability to operate in, in um, uh, uh, much uh, more adverse conditions in regard to sea state, um, many, many other things. This also includes a provision that Don Young uh, included that, that prohibits Russian vessels from uh, being in Alaskan waters, and I think that's very important, especially considering what we're going through uh, right now. I think that's, that's absolutely critical. And it also uh, includes a provision that uh, Congressman Huffman and I worked on on a bipartisan basis to ensure that AIS, the automatic identification system requirements for fishing vessels of certain sizes, are being applied to prevent illegal fishing or, over, uh, um, or, or, or fishing that's beyond 
um, uh, catch limits in, in our water. So very, very important legislation being advanced today. I want to thank everybody for working on it. And most importantly, I want to thank uh, the, the fact that this bill is being named after Congressman Don Young. This is much deserved. I had the chance to work for him under uh, John Rayfield uh, when he was chair and uh, absolutely very much deserved. So support the, le support the legislation and yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Missouri Reserve, the gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Uh, I would yield uh, two minutes to the gentleman from Massachusetts, uh, Representative Auchincloss, a member of the committee. The gentleman is recognized for two minutes. Mr. Chairman, thank you for working with me to meet President Biden's goal of deploying 30 gigawatts of offshore wind energy by 2030 as we transition to a clean energy economy. While I support funding the Coast Guard, I am deeply concerned that a provision in this bill would prevent us from meeting this imperative. To achieve 30 gigawatts by 2030, the United States will need five to six wind turbine installation vessels. Currently, there are only three in the world. This provision would prevent the use of these vessels and halt the only means we have to install and maintain wind turbines in the short term. Not only would this put those 30 gigawatts of clean energy out of reach by 2030, it would also threaten thousands of good-paying union jobs in Massachusetts. I share the chairman's goal of staffing offshore wind projects with American workers in the long term. Indeed, with my colleague, Representative Keating, I have secured funding to help train those workers. But there will be no jobs and no offshore wind energy if this amendment is passed and the development of offshore wind is stillborn. I ask for a commitment to work in conference to ensure a seamless transition to American workers that does not jeopardize access to wind turbine installation vessels for current, current and future development of offshore wind projects. I yield back, Mr. Chairman. The gentleman yields. The gentleman from Oregon reserves. The gentleman, gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Uh, thank you. The, the gentleman was suspended. Oh, he yielded back. Okay, sorry. Okay. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I'd yield two minutes to the gentleman from North Carolina, the ranking member of the Water Resource Subcommittee, Mr. Rouser. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, it's so Ladies fitting that today we are passing the Coast Guard Reauthorization Bill, a very good bipartisan piece of legislation, naming it in honor of our dear friend and colleague, Don Young of Alaska, who did so much during his time here for the Coast Guard. A fixture in the House for 49 years, Don Young took care of the needs of Alaskans like no other could. So it was a natural fit for him to serve as chairman of both the Natural Resources Committee and the Transportation and In Infrastructure Committee during his time. His accomplishments for Alaska and throughout the course of his life are well known and numerous. He was certainly a throwback to the old days on Capitol Hill. He fought hard for his constituents, for Alaska, for America. He had the force of a lion, but great compassion and boy, did he know how to live life to the fullest. He was the perfect public servant, for he had two attributes one must have to survive and serve the public well, a tough hide, but a tender heart. That's the gentleman from Alaska that I got to know. That's the man who, with his dear wife Anne by his side, told me at my birthday party last month that he wanted to get the show on the road, go up to the stage and sing happy birthday. I simply said, yes, sir, and what a memorable night he made it. Sometimes words cannot properly describe a man, for the emotions that stir the soul are so powerful, words cannot possibly reflect them. That's how it feels for me, anyway. But let it be said many times over, Don Young was a force, a legend in his own time, and America is better and greater because of him. Let's pass this Coast Guard reauthorization bill in honor of our great friend, Don Young. I yield back. The gentleman, from, the gentleman yields, the gentleman from Missouri reserves, the gentleman from Oregon. Uh, Mr. Speaker, may I uh, ask as to the uh, time remaining on either side? The gentleman from Oregon has five and a half minutes. The gentleman from Missouri has eight and a half. Okay. Uh, Ms. Speaker, I yield uh, two minutes uh, to the gentleman from uh, Massachusetts, Representative uh, Keating. The gentleman is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I associate myself with the remarks of my colleagues regarding our, our late colleague, uh, Don Young, uh, my friend, someone I worked on with fishing issues, ferry issues, air service issues, uh, and he will be sorely missed. 
Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of H.R. 6865, which makes significant investments in the extraordinary work of the United States Coast Guard. I have deep concerns, though, about one provisions in the bill uh, regarding the sole source crewing of foreign vessels needed to construct the first offshore wind projects in our country. This language will prevent existing crews from already planned offshore wind projects years before the ships can be built and long before the American seamen are trained to take on these jobs. We all support U.S. jobs, but here at home, this industry is at its relative infancy, and the requirements in this provision will prevent participation of the existing fleet of vessels needed to begin construction on these projects while no U.S. alternative exists. This will cost us jobs, jeopardizing more than 3,600 jobs, largely union jobs, from the Vineyard Wind Project in my district alone, and create years of delays to the building of offshore wind projects with an estimated 22,000 new jobs across the eastern seaboard. Mr. Chairman, I ask you to work with me to amend this language in conference to ensure that the United States does not falter as we take on our first steps into this burgeoning industry, one that will increase our energy independence, create American jobs, and move us away from our reliance on fossil fuels. Uh, thank you, and I yield back to the chairman uh, of the committee, the gentleman from Oregon, Mr. DeFazio. Gentleman, I, gentleman yields. I thank for the gentleman for yielding back. Uh, certainly, I would, I would assure both this gentleman and uh, Representative Auchincloss that you know, I'll be happy uh, to work with the two of you as, uh, as the legislation goes to the Senate. Um, you know, uh, I, I want to move toward employing qualified American mariners and have the people who work on these ships meet the same requirements as American mariners. Uh, you know, flags of convenience have destroyed the U.S. maritime industry. We're going to rebuild it and we're going to rebuild it with American crews and ships. Dominion uh, Resources is currently building uh, an insertion ship. Uh, but I certainly uh, do not want to impede uh, projects in the near term, uh, Vineyard Wind and others uh, that are immediately pending, and uh, we will work to ensure there are no disruptions as we move toward a cleaner energy future. Be happy to work with the two gentlemen and others who are concerned. That I yield back. The gentleman reserves. Oh, I, well, I reserve the balance of my time. But. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Speaker. I would yield one minute to the gentleman from Tennessee, Mr. Burchett. The gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Ranking Member. I stand here not to talk about the bill, but to talk about my friend Don Young. Um, when I first got up here, I told Don that I was a um, an avid gold panner in Knoxville, Tennessee, and yet I. In my lifetime, I'd never found one flake of gold. And he told me if I would come to, to Alaska, he said, Timmy, I could put you on some gold. And I, we talked about our love of the outdoors. We also talked about our love of traditional country music, Mr. Speaker. Um, Rick Crawford had his little band over here and uh, playing one night, and they were playing some good old country music, some Johnny Paycheck, the, the music that speaks to your heart. And, um, and Don and I were talking about the, the current state of country music and just how horrible it was. And that uh, if I wanted to listen to rock music, I'd turn on a rock station. I wanted to listen to rap, I'd turn on a rap station. But dadgummit, country music was what we wanted to hear. And we did. And these country music people today are not country music people. And I would, I would put it in Don's words, but I would probably be called out on an ethics charge, Mr. Mr. Speaker. So I will not do that. But um, I stand here today as a just a as a friend of Don Young's and someone that will miss him dearly. And I miss his his abrupt, gruff way about himself that was my daddy was quite like that and I and I grew up in that household and I understand completely but he was, had a rough exterior but he was a very gentle person and I will miss him dearly thank you Mr. Speaker the gentleman yields the gentleman from Missouri reserves the gentleman from Oregon is recognized you need a reserve the gentleman from Oregon reserves the gentleman, gentleman from Missouri is recognized thank you Mr. Speaker at this time I would yield two minutes to the gentleman from Louisiana the Republican whip Mr. Scalise the gentleman is recognized for two minutes Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank the gentleman from Missouri for yielding. Uh, what a great tribute to be naming this Coast Guard Reauthorization Bill after Don Young. Uh, while we mourn his loss today, uh, pay tribute uh, to Don and Statuary Hall. His family was here. And as you're paying tribute to a great life, 
the dean of the house, served 49 years in this great chamber from the 49th state of Alaska, uh, you can't help but thinking of all the Don Young stories. And clearly there's a tie to this bill because Don served on the Coast Guard Subcommittee of Transportation for his entire uh, tenure that the committee was in existence, the subcommittee, and loved the Coast Guard, loved the relationship they had in Alaska, just trying to get more icebreakers so that we could keep up with Russians continuing to open up their shipping lanes and not having the ability to get enough uh, Coast Guard cutters to break ice in Alaska. Don Young was always a champion for Alaska. Uh, he was a great friend. Uh, he was somebody who you knew where he stood all the time. And if you stood in his way, he would make it clear that he was going to keep moving forward. Uh, as we look at the seat that Don Young always sat in, a chamber of 435 people where there are no reserve seats, everybody knows that's where Don Young sat. And when you look over there today, it's a little bit sad, but you, you can only think of great memories of Don Young when you see uh, the, the black cloth draped over that seat. We'll always remember Don Young, a man who loved this country, surely loved the Coast Guard, uh, and epitomized what is the great state of Alaska. Uh, no better champion they had in Congress than Don Young. Look forward to passing this bill with overwhelming support, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Missouri reserves. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Continue to reserve. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, at this time, I would yield one minute to the gentleman from Arkansas, Mr. Crawford. The gentleman is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the uh, gentleman from Missouri for yielding. I rise today to recognize the passing of my friend and colleague, Representative Don Young. While many accomplished and effective men and women have served here in the House of Representatives over the years, very few have built a legacy like Representative Young. Over the last almost 12 years, I've had the honor of serving with him on the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, where he spent untold hours fighting for stronger investment in American infrastructure. The Don Young Coast Guard Authorization Act on the floor today is just one of many examples of this. He took his job as Dean of the House seriously. He regularly offered advice to colleagues like his warnings to me to never shave my beard. And he was eager to welcome members and their families to Capitol Hill. My kids loved going and getting a tour of his office and hearing his wild hunting stories. Representative Young will be remembered for his boisterous personality and outrageous anecdotes, but above all, he'll be remembered for his passion for the people of Alaska. I'm thankful for the time I had to serve with Representative Young and my prayers are with his family, friends, and staff and constituents. And today I encourage my colleagues to honor our friend and support HR 6865. Thank you, and I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Missouri reserves. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Continue to reserve. The gentleman from Oregon reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can I inquire as to how much time's left? The gentleman has four and a half minutes remaining. How about the other side? Two and a half. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I would yield uh, one minute to the gentleman from California, Mr. Calvert. Thank you, and uh, I rise in support of this legislation. Uh, Don uh, represented Alaska in this house for nearly as long as Alaska has been a state. He was a ferocious advocate for the people he represented, not the least of whom were Alaska's native people who held a special place in his heart. Uh, we're going to miss Don. He was a champion for the North Slope, Alaska's commercial fisheries, infrastructure, obviously. Uh, he spent his career fighting his uh, with, for his constituents to use Alaska's vast natural resources to bring prosperity to his state. Don knew what made our country great and how to work across the aisle to deliver for the people of Alaska. Don was my first chairman. I came here 30 years ago, and he quickly found me, and he said, I heard you want to be on my committee. And I said, yes, Mr. Chairman. Well, do whatever I tell you, and you'll do, be just fine. Well, I think at some time or another, all of us have lived by those words. I'll miss Don. I'll miss his friendship, his humor, his passion. My thoughts and prayers go out to his wife, Ann, and to the family. Rest in peace, Don. The gentleman from Missouri reserves. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Continue to reserve. The gentleman from Oregon reserves. The gentleman, gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I'd yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Shabbat. The gentleman is recognized for 30 seconds. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I had the honor to serve 26 years here in the House with Don Young. And there's an expression some of our Texans have about not messing with Texas. Well, with Don Young, you knew not to mess with Alaska, and we butted heads on that several times. And, uh, but we remained friends, and when my family and I went to Alaska some years ago, he 
told us the place is not to miss. It was a family vacation. It was wonderful. We stopped by the state fair there, and we picked up uh, I'm a young man buttons. This is one today, and I'm a young woman buttons for my wife and daughter. And periodically, I'd wear it here in the house, and uh, he always got a kick out of that. Now Don Young's gone, and as they say about Lincoln, he belongs to the ages. He'll be long remembered in this place, and he'll certainly be long remembered in Alaska. May rest in peace. He'll back. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Missouri reserves. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. I reserve. The gentleman from Oregon reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. At this time, I'd yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from uh, Texas, Mr. McCall. Yeah, the Don Young. <clears throat> what can you say about Don? 30 seconds. I always saw him as a captain, the, the tugboat captain, the captain of the ship. He was the captain of this ship, this great institution, the house. And he was rough on the exterior like a state, rugged, larger than life, but a heart serving for others. I'll never forget going to the White House when we signed the Tax Cut and Jobs Act into law. Anwar opened up. He did a little jig in front of the White House. I think that may have been one of the days he broke his promise of maybe having a little drink. Uh, but I will say this. I'll always cherish my last day on the House sitting right next to him. Uh, the very last day we were here, for an hour, talking about this great institution, talking about our families, what's Time important has in life. Expired. Little did I know that the next day uh, he would be lost. The gentleman's time and, uh, has expired. He, let me just say, in closing, he planned to serve the, in the Congress. The gentleman's time has expired. In five seconds. Until God or the voters decide it was his time. Has been it's it's no coincidence that God called him on the 49th year as, in Congress as a representative for the 49th state. May God hold him in the palm of his hands. Gentlemen's time has expired. The gentleman from a reserve. Oregon. The reserves the gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Can I inquire how much time we have left? The gentleman from Missouri has two and a half minutes, as well as the gentleman from Oregon, two and a half minutes. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Uh, yeah, I'd like to yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from California, Mr. Issa. The gentleman for 30 seconds. Uh, Could the from gentleman California ask for unanimous for consent seconds. for two and a half additional minutes for both sides? The gentleman no from California is recognized for 30 seconds. <laughs> you can ask for it. Madam Speaker, Don Young has a 50 years of stories. I'll tell you just one in 20 seconds. In 20 seconds, Madam Speaker, Don Young faced with a young member wanting to affect bypass mail in Alaska could have dressed me down and told me over his dead body. Instead, he directed me to go to Alaska to see how bypass mail was done in the post office there, sent me to an Aleutian Island, sent me to a few other appropriate places, and changed my view of why we have bypass mail. That's the Don Young I'll remember, and I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. The gentleman from Oregon reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. They're not going to say no. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ms. Madam Speaker. Who's up? Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Ohio, Mr. Balderson. The gentleman is recognized for 30 seconds. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Ranking Chair. I rise in support of the Don Young Coast Guard Authorization Act, which ensures that the dedicated men and women of the U.S. Coast Guard are adequately trained and equipped to fulfill their critical mission of securing America's coastlines. It has been an honor for me as a three-year member of Congress to serve alongside Dean Young uh, and always sit behind him and hear him yell. So thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I yield back. The gentleman yields back. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Sir. The gentleman from Oregon reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from New Jersey, Mr. Van Drew. The gentleman from New Jersey is recognized for 30 I, seconds. I rise in support of the Don Young Coast Guard Authorization Act of 2022. Congressman Young brought a distinct candor and a character to Congress. This body and our country are better off thanks to his service, and he will be dearly missed. I am proud to note that this legislation authorizes $120 million for the construction of new barracks at the United States Coast Guard Training Center, Cape May, New Jersey. The barracks project will expand opportunities for women to serve in the Coast Guard, as well as expand the training center's recruitment capacity by 25 percent. The United States must Gentlemen's project strength, and this legislation will ensure that the 
United States is the ready to address time the challenges has presented by adversaries such the as Russia and China. I yield expired. back. The and gentleman boy, from that's Oregon the fastest I ever did anything. <laughs> gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Seconds uh, to the gentlelady, uh, Representative Maliotakis. Gentlewoman is recognized for 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, my district is home to Coast Guard Station New York and is the largest, largest Coast Guard station on the East Coast. This legislation authorizes $1.2 million in needed repairs to ensure their mission and day-to-day -day operations to continue. I want to thank everyone for this bipartisan effort and to say that Don Young um, was an amazing man would be an understatement. He is some, one of the first members I met as a freshman. He advocated to help me get on the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. I know how much he loves the Coast Guard. I know how much he loved uh, Alaska, and it is so fitting that we are naming this legislation after him. I yield back. Gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I yield 30 seconds to the gentleman from Mississippi, Mr. Guest. The gentleman from Mississippi is recognized for 30 seconds. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I rise today in honor of the life and service of the late Congressman Don Young of Alaska, former dean of the United States House of Representatives. It's fitting that this Coast Guard reauthorization, which we are considering today, is named in his memory. Congressman Young made a lasting impact on this institution, and his legacy of service will endure far into the future. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I yield back. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Reserve. The gentleman from Oregon reserves. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Who's closing the main post? Yeah. Um, I'm out of speakers, Madam Chair, so um, I'm prepared to close. Yes, sir. The gentleman from Oregon prepared to close? Yes. The gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Can I inquire how much time I have? <laughs> 30 seconds. All right. <laughs> thank, thank you, Madam Speaker. I just... You know, this is obviously a fitting tribute, and we ran out of time. A lot of people wanted to say something to about Don, and, and I apologize uh, that we did that, but, but I just want to close by uh, thanking the, the chairman um, of both the committee and the subcommittee, uh, the ranking member, um, for putting this bill together. It is very much a bipartisan effort, um, but I particularly want to thank the staffs on both sides of the aisle for the work that they did. Uh, and in particular, uh, John Rayfield, who had the opportunity to work with uh, Chairman Young when he was chairman of the committee as well. And with that, um, I would urge my colleagues to support this very important piece of legislation and yield back the balance of my Has time. Has expired. The gentleman from Oregon is recognized. Uh, yield myself as much time as I may concern. Gentleman from Oregon. Well, um, it was very fitting that the tributes uh, we heard. We all have stories uh, about Don, and uh, which we had more time uh, to share. But uh, his work, uh, you know, many decades of work uh, will stand as a monument to his life. And this bill in particular uh, will honor uh, his extraordinary service on the Transportation Infrastructure Committee. I think it was called Public Works when Don came to serve here, uh, when he first came to serve here. So. Um, I would urge uh, this bill is, as I mentioned earlier, uh, we're finally recognizing that the Coast Guard has been under-resourced for decades. Uh, we're beginning to uh, deal with that problem. Their shore side infrastructure, uh, their, uh, their assets uh, at sea, and in particular, uh, the extraordinary people who serve in the United States Coast Guard. So, uh, I'm proud to uh, have named the bill for Don. I would urge uh, that this bill uh, be uh, unanimously uh, approved by our colleagues. Uh, with that, I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman yields back the balance of his time. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 6865 as amended? Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the gentleman from Texas seeks recognition. And that's the A's and A's.